There we go. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's Monday, the 29th of June. Thanks so much for joining um, our personal care town hall meeting. Um, we have a number of people on the call um, who I'm gonna to ask to just say a few words and get us started. And then if you have any questions, you can let us know. Um, if you're watching this on recording, I would like to reach out for um, any of us to uh, have any questions answered or get in touch with anybody. We'll put uh, the information in the chat. Um, my name is Rachel Holland. We are uh, hosting this from the Hamilton Partnership. Uh, my email is info at thehamiltonpartnership.com. Um, we're an association of businesses um, here in Hamilton that um, get together and talk about how we can help with economic development in the township. And a subset of us is the um, Shop Hamilton group. So if you're interested in, in joining any one of those, you can reach out to us and we can get you in touch um, and a membership form. Also, um, we're the creators of hamilton-strong.com, which is a website that um, is a registration for businesses in Hamilton to be able to um, get the word out about their times open, what their specials are, all kinds of information about their business. Um, you own the um, login, so you can change the login and or change the uh, information on there daily if you'd like. And it's being promoted via social media and um, on uh, with newspaper um, ads and uh, all throughout the township through emails as well. So um, that's a little bit about us and I'm gonna turn it over actually and have the mayor do a welcome for us, mayor. Oh, you're muted. It's not working. No. Oh my I can goodness. follow you. All right. <laughs> you're saying good morning. Hello. Good morning. Do you want to try to call in? Do you have a number? Oh, there's a number. Okay, no. that's right. Okay, well, we'll turn it over to, to Fred. Sorry. Fred. <laughs> the mayor says hi. It's fantasy, you Fred. Yours works and the mayor's doesn't. Hmm. I swear it's not a coup. I swear to God it's not a coup. But I'm sure the mayor is going to say nice things about all his people as he does on a regular basis. But, you know, uh, the mayor displays outstanding leadership on an everyday basis that inspires me and everybody in, in this department. So we are so excited to have him as our mayor. And um, that's the nice things I've said to him. Hopefully you heard those. Um, but uh, listen, uh, uh, I want to thank the partnership again for, for host, hosting these seminars. And uh, we can't stop after this. You know, we got to keep being a constant presence uh, of support for our businesses out there. And uh, it's a learning curve for us too. You know, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about barber shops. I, uh, I talked to my barber, Mark Slaracy, this morning. He got an appointment for 7 o'clock tonight, and that's the end of it. So you have to tell us what you need as a business in Hamilton Township. I gave you my word that we're here to help and here to cooperate. So, uh, you know, just that. No matter what your situation is, you know, pick up the phone. Our motto here in this office when you came in for a site plan is let's see if we can make it work. So again, Rachel, thank you for your hard work here. It's really appreciated on our end. Great, thanks so much. Um, we also have Kate Kane, who I'll introduce in a second, and Chris Helwig from our um, health department. Chris, can you just give us an, a little overview um, for anybody that is um, logging on or may watch this later just to see um, any special considerations that people should be thinking about as they're reopening with personal care? Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Hellwig. I'm the health officer here, and I oversee the health department. And, you know, so we want to be that technical assistance. So as everyone moves forward with reopening, or if you have any other general health issues, I know we usually don't get involved with um, barbershops and salons um, too often, unless there's a specific that we have to deal with. But for those, for massage parlors, we do um, uh, inspect them as part of uh, our routine inspections and they get licensed through the clerk's office here. But um, as you know, we move forward with reopening, I think it's important just to you know, keep up to date as guidelines consistently change um, as we move forward and guidelines will be updated. And if you get have questions or get concerns, you know, it's really important to just reach out to the township so we can help clarify that. And, um, and we're, we're here, um, just like Fred said, um, you know, we're here for you and to provide uh, you know, the best assistance that we can. Oh, 
Great, I won't you. Sorry, <laughs> thanks, Chris. Thanks so much. Um, we also had, I just want to introduce um, or ask Lindsay Lane just joined. Lindsay, can you tell us where you're from? If she's not on mute. Oh, I don't think she's got sound. All right, well, I see you, but I don't see a little microphone, Lindsay, so I don't know if we can hear you. But if you can hear us, thank you so much for joining. Um, we're recording this just so you know, so you'll be able to watch it later or share it with anybody. And then if you have any questions, you can reach out to anybody. We're gonna put our email addresses in the chat um, in a little bit, so. Rachel, I, Rachel, yeah. I, know that, I know that Lindsay had a client this morning. Okay. So he was oh, gonna good. sign on and listen back and forth. Perfect. And that the recording was going to be um, online and everything like that. So yeah. perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I'll introduce Kate Kane. She is the deputy director of um, community and economic development for the township. She and I have been um, going door to door, kind of meeting people um, in the community, meeting businesses as they're, as they're reopening and basically just asking, you know, how are you? What do you need? Um, and getting a really great response on, you know, little things, you know, I, I really haven't found this or how do I get in touch with this or, you know, so um, if you have any questions or know of anybody that, that, you know, needs to, to talk, we can come out and either sit and chat or do a call or anything. Um, we've done actually a couple calls with a couple of business owners um, after these seminars that last week too. So I'm very happy to do that as well. So with that, I'll just introduce Kate and she can tell you kind of other things that are going on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, as Fred and the mayor mentioned and Chris, you know, we're here to help on a lot of different levels, you know, getting you reopen, getting you safely reopen, and then, you know, how we can help promote your business, you know, and, and give you the resources that you need. Um, a week ago, I did not know an, a, a lot about personal care uh, industry, um, like other industries. I ironically had my hair done on Friday and I, for two hours, picked the brain of my, um, my hairstylist, uh, Kathy, who owns uh, Hairworks. And uh, she just had a lot of great um, information that I thought I could provide today as well. But also as we talk, you know, I'm sure Elaine, you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, are things that you're doing in your barbershop? Um, same thing with Lindsay. I think there's a Kim that just joined us. Um, good morning, Kim. Hi. Hi. Not to put you on the spot, but you just joined us. So we just wanted to say welcome. Kim, where are you from? Um, I'm from Hamilton. My salon's in Mercerville. Okay. And what's your salon? It's called Life Central Hair Studio. Perfect. So when I was at my um, hair stylist on Friday, she mentioned a great website behind the chair that a lot of stylists and um, hair professionals knew about. And it actually had a lot of great information as you were reopening to prepare your salon. So I guess my question, I just wanted to see if anybody else had been familiar with this particular website, but what it did was it provided a questionnaire that you could give to your customers. It also had signage for your mirrors, um, and also a lot of reminder signages, please wear your mask, six feet apart. Um, but it gave a lot of tools to, to professionals that were reopening. And obviously your industry, like others, very different, um, was kind of shut down and then to a screeching halt was just, um, you know, told to close and didn't really have any options for curbside or anything. So I guess, you know, if anybody is able to share, you know, how maybe you've continued to keep in touch with your clients over the past 10, 12 weeks, or, you know, what things have worked for you. Um, and we'd love to hear that. So um, I guess that's kind of my first little question to the, to the group. What was that website again? So it's called behind the chair. I'm going to actually, as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to, I'm going to, Send it right over to you um, with the link because it was a blog. It had Instagram um, posting templates and things that you could really use. So okay. um, I'll put it right in for you. Um, so my question to Kim and to Elaine, you know, has how have the last 10, you know, 10, 12 weeks been for you 
um, what challenges, what questions that any of our departments or professionals can can answer for you or just share experiences, right? So. Anything? The hardest part really they would call when you were closed and you really couldn't open and let anybody in and trying to explain that was really it was grateful that they reached out but very hurtful that you couldn't help them out. Right. Most of them are very understanding though. Some of them, well, you know, keyboard is different. So the last week, you know, you all have been able to open. Um when your clients come in, are you um Doing anything that, um, you know, do you have a station in the beginning? Can you kind of share with us, you know, what, what things have been working for you? Um, well, I have the sanitizer out as soon as you walk in. I have the okay. three questions. Um, I have the thermometer. Mm -hmm. um, I ha if, if it's a, like a family, they can come in together, but, um, I have the customers call me when they get here. And then when one leaves, I sanitize the chair, change the capes, sanitize all my utensils, and then let the next person in. So it takes a little bit extra time in between clients, but the precautions, the precaution. How have they been about, um, are they making reservations? Are you taking walk-ins? How is that working? All appointments. And it's, it's very hard because I have a lot of older clients that aren't like internet savvy and they don't understand it. Just walk in. You see, some of them, you could see it on their look at, on their face that they're um, lost and upset, but I can pretty much try and get them in that day. If not the next day and make an appointment and then they come back. Okay. But yeah, I, I haven't taken in any walk-ins. Okay. Um, yeah. I can say the same, pretty much the same thing. Um, we're not supposed to be taking walk-ins anyway. And, um, you know, I have the three questions. I, I um, removed some chairs from my waiting area. And um, what I'm doing is I, I, on my website, I created a protocols page and I'm sending it either a day, the day before or a couple days before I'm sending it out um, mostly as a, test, a text message link so mm -hmm. that they can be aware of what's going to happen and how it's going to go. And, um, but my question, you know, I've, I have, I have minimal staff, but I have people looking for work and, um, I've been hesitant on whether to bring them in because we are, we're distancing. Like, I don't know whether to allow my stylist to work together, even though the stations are approximately six feet apart. Um, you know, I want my clients to feel safe. So we're, we're like working Monday, we're working Sundays just so we can spread it out. And, um, you know, moving forward, I'm not sure if, if, um, I mean, everyone's wearing masks and we're doing, we're doing all the safety stuff. So I'm wondering if it would be, um, you know, I just want everyone's input on like how they're handling that because I would like to, um, you know, be able to work with my staff. Well, I, I've got a question for you. Um, were, was your staff able to collect unemployment throughout this process? Yes. And, and that's a good thing. And yes. I just noted that the federal um, supplement of $600 is gonna end June, or July 24th. So while I'm sure they're doing okay on unemployment, you know, after that, that's gonna take a pretty good hit. So, you know, you gotta start basing your, your decisions around then. I know a lot of businesses are saying uh, they're, gonna, they're working understaffed right now because of that uh, federal monies, but a decision is gonna have to be made after July 24th to call them back or to make some kind of move with them. Uh, that's first. And second, yeah. um, the six feet is the suggested area. Everybody wants you to stay that far apart, but masks are a key here too, all right? Um, and not having people sitting in your waiting rooms, you know, uh, uh, talking and everything like that. I went somewhere the other night and they came out and they had a, one of those airport signs that had your, had your family's name on it. And I thought that was unique and, and uh, like that. I think a way is to be able to reduce density while still making money. Thank you. 
Kim, are you doing, so you, you're a salon, right? Not a, not a barbershop? No, we're a salon. Okay. So, I mean, one suggestion that I, and I don't know if this makes any difference, but um, one suggestion from one stylist that was a friend of mine a couple of months ago, she's like, I don't know how this is going to work when we all come back. Do we, and you tell me, you know, are you having people like, so when I get my hair done, right, I have to have it and it sits for 45 minutes. So are you having people still sit in the salon? Do they go back and sit in their car while it's proofing? Like, how does that work? Definitely in the <laughs> What'd you say in the car? Yeah, no, I said them, they were suggesting, yeah, they were suggesting them sit in the car, possibly. They hadn't worked it out yet, but they were suggesting possibly just to limit the number of people that are in the actual building, which I know is your concern, having them go back and sit in their car and then come back after the 45 minutes, you know, because they could have other people in the, in the room while that's happening. Hey, Rachel, what you do that. I go in my car and I read a book while my hair is, what is it, proofing? Yes. <laughs> Yes, Are you getting your hair proofing tonight, Fred? <laughs> is it proofing? I don't know. I'm making words up, but yes. Um, that was my question. I, I'm just making suggestions. I don't know. She suggested it to me. I don't know if anybody's dealing with that or thinking about it. I had a client ask me if, if um, I wanted her to wait in the car. But we've, you know, I have a very small staff. And um, so we've just been working with two of us at, at a time. So I can let one person wait in the waiting room with their color processing, you know, and take another client in between. Um, but uh, my concern is, um, you know, I could probably have four stylists work at the same time and still do it safely, but I haven't done that. Just weighing that out. But it's, it's, you're I, and that's what you're safe with. That's, I mean, I might be also, I mean, and I'm not speaking for the health department by any means, but you know, what you may need to do a survey of your clients. What do they feel comfortable with? I mean, if you are doing everything six feet apart and doing all the things that are necessary, it's whether or not people are going to want to feel comfortable coming back in with all of those parameters in place, right? We're doing everything that the health department is saying, we're doing everything that CDC is saying. And then from there, maybe do a survey of your clients and say, you know, are you okay being in the space? Cause they know your space, right? They've been there. You know, are you comfortable with having four other people here in the building with you? Yeah. And I have asked them. So yeah, I've been asking people, they seem fine, you know, how, how are you guys doing with testing? Has anybody implemented any testing for your, for your staff? Um, or required or asked any of your staff or thinking about getting your staff tested? How is that working? We just take temperatures. We take our temperatures. Okay. So every day for the hairstylist and then for every appointment, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I had a question come up, um, you know, would, uh, and this is more for Chris, so I'm just, I'm bringing it to Chris, but you know, what, my hairstylist on Friday was like, you know, will we be hearing from the health department for an inspection? You know, and since we physically in the township, you know, don't inspect the hair salons, their, you know, their regulations are up for con consumer, uh, division of consumer affairs. You know, I told her, no, you know, she's doing everything right. But, you know, question back to Chris, um, you know, as long as they're following procedures and your clients are feeling safe, you know, there isn't anything else that they have to do on your end, correct? Yeah, there's correct. Since we don't license um, the salons here in Hamilton, um, there we would not get involved on a routine basis unless there was a, a request that if you wanted us to come in and check out your space, you know, obviously we could do that. Or um, if there was a complaint, then, you know, we would uh, follow up that way. But Right now, everything's going through consumer affairs unless something changes um, down the road. And following up on that, Chris, for contact tracing. So, um, you know, Kim and Elaine, when you're having customers come in, you have information on them. Obviously, you have your name, their name, their phone number. So for contact tracing, Chris, what other information would they necessarily need to collect if something did happen? And if either one of the clients or one of the workers ended up did getting, uh, getting infected, what other information should they be collecting if they're not doing that already? Um, so really it's, you know, as 
you're making appointments, you'll have you know their name and contact info. And I think that's really the most important thing for us. That way we can start working backwards. And if we find out that either one of your staff members or a client who tested positive and could have been within that 24, 48 hour period before they were symptomatic, or if they were ended up for some reason being symptomatic in your um, salon, then we can, you know, would identify who came in and, and who was considered a close contact and work backwards and identify all of those, um, those contacts that way. And that's why it's important to you know, make sure to, you know, keep records of, you know, all of your appointments, especially, I mean, not, you don't need to do it for like months on end, but just make sure that you know, um, you know, when people came in and keep their phone number and contact info for at least, I would say at least two weeks back that way, in case something does happen, you know, we can, um, you know, work our way backwards and, and reach out. And what are the parameters for contact tracing? I mean, it's, it's like increased um, contact for more than, was it 10 minutes? Yeah, so we consider close contacts, anybody who is within six feet for 10 or more minutes, which given the nature of your services, you guys would be close contacts. So um, it's, uh, that's why, you know, with, you know, especially, you know, the personal care services, salons, spas, um, massage, barbershops, that it's really important that, you know, everyone, you know, you, you practice as much, you know, of the guidelines as, as you can and, you know, maintain, you know, separation between, you know, client pairs, you know, client, um, you know, uh, stylist pairs and, you know, that you're wearing a mask, that your clients are wearing a mask if, if they can. And, you know, and we're working through this and, you know, good disinfecting, good cleaning, because that's really how we're going to make sure that we keep going on the right path. New Jersey is going in the right direction and we want to make sure that it keeps going in the right direction and we don't end up like Florida, South Carolina, you know, Arizona, because if that happens, everything's going to be shut down again. So it really it does take everyone's effort moving forward to make sure that we continue down this, this right path. That way we can continue on, um, you know, slowly reopening and, and having the services available. Okay, great. Thank you. And then, the, so the information, can you just give, give them a, just a really quick breakdown of, of, you know, contact tracing. So the people are coming in. So someone gets, let's just say one of um, Kim's, people gets um, infected, one of her, her clients gets infected. So they would call, can you just talk about a little bit, like, you know, what can be said, how the information happens, you know, they would come back and look at her records. How does that work? Just so everybody knows. So right now, the way that it would work is, let's say that a client or even a worker um, at the salon tested positive and she tested positive today, but she was at work yesterday and so what we would do is we get notified if, if she is a Hamilton resident so we're only we only get notified of Hamilton residents um, who test positive just because that's our jurisdiction so if your clients or um, your workers live outside of Hamilton that health department would then reach out to that person so every municipality is covered by a local health department um, so let's say if you live in Burlington County, there's a Burlington County Health Department because they're not municipal based. So whatever that local health department is will reach out. They'll talk to the person who is sick, go through a list of questions and, and try to work backwards with them to identify where they've been in the 48 hours prior to either their symptom test. Um, if they were, um, if they, or I'm sorry, they're um, 40 hours from their, their test. If they were symptomatic, then they would try to do it from 40 hours from when their symptoms started. So if their symptoms started yesterday, then they would go back to Friday. Um, so, and just seeing where they were, just in case that there was some sort of um, spread of, of the disease during that time period while the person might've been out and about. And we would identify all of those close contacts as much as possible. Obviously nothing's 100%, but if we knew that they went to the salon, then you know, we would contact the salon and work to see, all right, who had contact with this, um, this stylist and get all of their clients for the day or those two days and all of the workers that worked on the same shift. And then we would make contact with them and make sure that we got all the contact info um, of those people 
and then we would make contact as the health department uh, with them. So the role that, let's say, the salon owner would play is really, you know, we want to be partners with you, and really it, it makes our job a lot easier if, um, you know, we're you know, a willing partner. Obviously, we don't share this information outside of the department, so as we understand that it's, you know, it's personal and private information, but we're allowed to accept that information and we take that and it's all confidential here. So it's not subject to over requests or anything else like that because um, it's private health information, but we use that to then identify other people who potentially could be exposed. I have a question about that. So let's say that that scenario happened and um, somebody that was here Saturday was um, you know, diagnosed and positive. What then happens? Do we quarantine or? Yes, so, the, um, so that's part of the process and thank you because I, I, I skipped that part. But um, so let's say that you had a client there and you know, they were there for an hour and you, you, know, you were working with them and you fell within that time period, then we would tell you um, that now you have to quarantine for 14 days. Whoever was in the building at that time? As long as they were within, they were within that uh, six feet for more than 10 minute time frame and space frame, then you would be required to quarantine. But the salon could stay open, just those people yeah. couldn't? Yeah, okay. so let's say, and, and that's, you know, and that's I think another positive to having maybe reduced staff or staggering, you know, staff shifts that if you don't, if you have all of your staff working at, you know, the same time, you potentially could have all of your staff out on quarantine and then your salon might have to close for two weeks. Um, and, and we've seen this in other locations where, you know, let's say like a dog groomer, um, you know, ever they had all their staff in there and they um, ended up somebody tested positive and now their entire staff is, is out um, because they were all within that, that space. Um, so, but yeah, so if you do have that close con um, identified contact with somebody who's confirmed, it would be two weeks and that you have to self-isolate. If you are somebody who is sick, you have to self-isolate for 10 days plus 72 hours after symptoms resolve. So it could be up to 13 days or I mean, or as little as 10 days, or it could be even uh, longer depending on how long symptoms last. Okay, so the, uh, the other, uh, maybe I missed it, but the only one question I have is, so if the contact tracing um, is identified from the person who's infected from a different health department, they will notify Hamilton. So let's say the person lived in, in Burlington. So that person, the worker or the, or the person that's identified, but then they have to contact trace back to Hamilton so that you can identify and call all the people that were in the facility where they were working or being serviced. Yeah, if they needed help, like we would help them with that. Usually, the way that it works is, let's say, if it's if it's a, a Burlington County case, and and the worker or the client lives in Burlington County, um, Burlington County would really handle it. They would let us know, and we would have access to that case because uh, they're because um, the address is located, especially with the um, uh, like the salon in this case, it would be added to the form as a. A secondary address or just like the workplace address and we would have access to that and we could help them out but they would really take the burden and lead so you might be hearing from us or you might be hearing from a, another um, health department it just depends but if they were let's say let's say it's um, like Hopewell and Hopewell only has a handful of people and it's you know we have this big group they might ask us like hey can you guys do this contact tracing for the people who work at the salon and we're like, yep, sure, we got it because we have more staff and we have, um, you know, if we're more able to do that, then we would reach out and do that. Awesome. Thank you. I have to go. Um, Thank you so much for joining. It was good to see yeah, you. Yeah, I learned a lot. I appreciate it. No problem. I put that um, link in the chat. So before you go behind the chair.com, that one particular blog article had a lot of templates, whether you're trying to communicate with your clients via Facebook, there's some Instagram uh, posts, there's also signage that you could start printing out today 
if you need other things that you're not thinking about, right? So, okay. yeah, I just took the link. Thank you. Okay. You're Thank welcome. You. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Eileen, any other questions on, um, you know, outreach or contact tracing or, or anything that you guys are having um, issues with or questions about? Um, no, I've been doing everything pretty much what you guys were saying. Okay, great. Brian, do you have any questions, any of your clients or um, people that are no, but as I mentioned last week, uh, Elaine at Gabe's Barbershop is, is following all the protocols that she's indicated uh, on, on this uh, call this morning. I, I'm, I am a, a customer of hers and uh, a longtime customer of hers. And um, she, everything she spelled out for you, she has laid out exactly as she discussed this morning. Uh, it, it does give a sense of, of um, increased uh, security and confidence that, that you know, you're, you're safe when you're, you're in there get, you know, getting your hair done. I think peace of mind for your clients is the most important thing now, regardless of what service you have, what industry, they are going to have a great experience and share it with others. Um, and that's the most important thing right now. So I, it looks like Kathy is trying to connect. Um, so I don't know if she's having, having, I have a question. Sure. Um, I just actually just had a phone call. Um, and the lady asked me what my protocols were and everything like that. And I told her and she asked me if it was, um, mandatory that every place has to take the temperature. I feel like some people, they don't want their temperature taken and I don't understand why. Like she didn't like the fact that we were taking temperatures. So like, Chris, Chris what's well, no, what? you're take? We're going to the hospital now. The doctor's offices are all taking them and into the hospital to get to um, a, a practice, say, they're taking the temperature just walking onto the property of the hospital, so. So if they, if, if they actually um, turn it down, can we turn them away? Should we turn them away? So I would refer back to, you know, the, D uh, the consumer affair guidelines, which do mandate that personal care businesses uh, temperature check. So um, I would not deviate from that. If somebody refuses, then um, you know I would refuse their service or okay. their you know their their business at that point. Just um, you know, every, I'm sure we've all watched the news that there's a lot of people who are very vocal about how they feel about complying or not complying with the rules. I, I, I again, you know, I think I, it's important that we have an open conversation, and you know, and everyone's you know, entitled to their, you know, opinion and, you know, there's no perfect answer for any of this, but we, I, I really want us to succeed and New Jersey and Hamilton specifically to succeed and that we don't see a, a rise in cases. And part of that is really going through um, these motions to make sure that we try to identify anybody who can put other people at risk. Um, and because you guys are in such close space, you know, due to the nature of your services, I think it's, it's really, really important that you guys are even extra cautious um, because you guys are having that long, close, prolonged contact. And it's really about protecting you and your, uh, your workers and even the client's um, health, uh, you know, when we go through and do both like the masking and, you know, temperature checks and symptom checks, because some people might not even know that they have a temperature and, you know, they might not have any other symptoms. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I didn't even realize I was running, you know, feverish. I thought it was just, you know, I just was feeling a little like, eh. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, now I should go get checked out. Um, and we do want people to continue getting tested as well. So, I mean, if you guys have questions about getting tested or where to go, you can always reach out to us. There's a lot of um, places throughout Hamilton and Mercer County that you can get tested at. So if there's questions and you can always reach out to us. Hey Chris, with that in mind, if someone is running a temperature, but the answers to the questions that Elaine is asking are all no. So have you been in contact with anybody who has COVID? Have you tested positive? Do you have any of the other symptoms? What should they do? I mean, is it something that automatically is like you have a temperature, you're out? I mean, you could have a UTI, right? Like, I mean, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It could be something completely different. And is yeah. that something that you should? So that's, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I would say if somebody has a temperature, they should, they should be excluded for um, 
regardless. And I would say that really for any symptom because, you know, we, you know, I'm not a clinician and we're in all, everyone on here is, is not a clinician. Uh, so it's, you don't want to get into, it's like, well, you only have two of like the five symptoms. So you're fine. It's like, you know, it's the same thing with our, you know, our camps and schools that it's like, all right, sorry, and daycares too. It's like, well, if they have any symptoms, just if you're better off just sending them home. Um, I can say that, let's say if somebody has the temperature and they get an alternate diagnosis, let's say they do have a UTI and they can, they go to the doctor, they get prescribed and it's like, all right, well then just reschedule it for 24 hours later or 24 hours after, you know, the fever resolves. And, you know, it's not that big of a deal because there, we know that there's a, an, an alternate diagnosis, whether, but if there's not, and it's just kind of an unknown, then they should really be following the, you know, the 10 day rule and, and self isolating for 10 days and hopefully, and really, you know, if you do identify somebody who might be sick, really encourage them to contact their doctor and, and to get a test as well. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Kathy, so thanks for joining us. I don't know if you can hear us. Kate's hair looks amazing. <laughs> Props for that. <laughs> um, I know you're joining us late and this is going to be, is this record? It's recorded. So obviously everything that you missed since nine, um, you can watch back, but I did share a lot of the insight that you taught me um, on Friday, as I sat there for two hours, just picking your brain, especially this behind the chair.com website. So um, hopefully you can hear me. I know you're on mute right now, but um, you know, I think uh, you know, all of these great things that we do for our clients, it's really um, a matter of just making them feel safe for the time that they're there. Right. Um, and then giving them peace of mind. So um, not to put you on the spot, but if you want to add anything, I don't even know if she's sitting there <laughs> <laughs> or have any be. questions for our health department, by all means. I don't think she's there. <laughs> I think she's having trouble. I'm not sure. But. That's okay. No, right. Katie, I am working behind the chair right now with a client. Yeah. You are multitasking. So anyway, I have to put you back on mute so I can continue. Um, let's all right. Go. Yes. Thank you. Good. Your hair does job. look good, I must say. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, mute you. Thanks. All right. Um, and, I, and I know everybody's time is valuable, and I know most salons, barbershops have extended. They're doing the six days, right? They're, um, Elaine, you're probably doing extend, you know, extended days, right? Um, in your, oh, yeah. right? So you can accommodate your uh, stylists and your clients. So, you know, we know your time is, is valuable. Um, so if anybody else has anything to offer or add or input, um, you know. If not, we can let, let us know. know. Yeah. Well, let us know if you have any questions. Kate, um, I put my email in the um, chat there. Um, I don't know, Kate, if you want to put yours underneath your yes. behind the chair um, comment as well. And then, um, like I said, this will be uploaded on our website today, if not today, then tomorrow. So if anybody else would like to watch, we can send it out. Um, we'll actually be sending out all four of them um, in an email this week, just so that people can watch and, and get some information. But please reach out for us if you have any questions or any concerns, um, or if you want to consider any other, you know, situations. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody's thought about going outside um, for anything, but, uh, you know, I know that the, um, restaurants are doing, are doing well, doing outside, you know, cutting or outside eating. So I don't know if that's a concern of anybody's to go out and do some barbershop clipping outside. But, um, you know, if so, then we should probably contact, um, uh, Fred and Kate in their office and see if there's any accommodations that need to be made to make that happen. So, um, can you, Rachel, can you send us Fred's email? Yep. I'm going to put it in here right now. Oh, good. And then Chris, uh, Chris, do you want to just add yours too, just so they have any questions or if they need to contact you, you know, in the event of contract tracing or any questions on that regard? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, awesome. Well, we will not waste any more your time. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure you sign up for hamilton-strong.com also, just so that you have your um, listing on there and we can push that out to all the residents in town. Okay. Through our emails. 
and social media posts, um, boosts and everything else. So thank you so much and we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. Have a good day, good luck, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.